to try to think through how we can cons construct scientific questions. I'll give you this picture as, as uh, the source of a curiosity. It leads me to ask a question, is the driver a man or a woman? How can I convert this question into this curiosity into a scientific question? And this, I take you to this four or five components of a question. Participants, intervention exposures and comparisons, then outcomes, and then design and methods. So, for me, this picture that led me to this curiosity about the gender of the driver, I can convert this into a question by, uh, by saying, the participants for my curiosity are drivers, index, test or the key information that led me to be curious is the drivers of a BMW who put petrol in their car in this way. The comparison for this information is standard pattern of driving, which is other cars who do not fill petrol in this way. And the method by which I can confirm the gender, which is the outcome of interest to me, could include various tests. Of those tests could be that at some stage, for example, at the next traffic light, I can ask all the drivers to come out of the car and provide me a blood sample. From that blood sample, I can test their chromosomes. And from the analysis of the chromosomes, I can determine which type of car driven by, was driven by which gender more or less often. And this can lead to think about the design of my study. So you can see that by becoming curious about information in front of me, I was able to ask a general question, what kind of a person drives this car? And then I was able to convert this into a scientific question by determining who are the participants and and, and what are their characteristics under different conditions? And then I find ways to confirm the outcome of interest to me. And then once I have information concerning characteristics and outcomes, then I can... Okay, and, and this information is collected through a particular study design. And then with this information, I produce an answer that I can put to a statistical test, which can give me the p-value for my hypothesis. So, the study design is frequently, there is some confusion about study design. We often use the term case control. So, in one type of study, we have people who, maybe are exposed to a new intervention or a new ex or have a new exposure or have a particular exposure for example some people may smoke the control exposure maybe who don't smoke and then we follow these people up over time and determine if they develop cancer or they don't develop cancer. And we know the percentage of people with or without cancer. And then with this information, you can calculate the effect size. And this is called a cohort study. 
On the other hand, we may have people with cancer who we call cases, and we may have people without cancer who we may call controls, and we go back in time and ask them to reflect on the previous years of their life and tell us whether or not they were smoking. When we collect this information, we can still put all this information together and calculate an effect size of the relationship between cancer and smoking. And this type of study is a control study. So you can get in both types of studies, we have participants and exposures and outcomes. But different designs. And there can be confusion between what is a cohort study and what's a case control study. So, okay, there is a, somebody wants to talk. Please go ahead. Yeah, it's me, Polona. That I, um, it, I was please like ans answering Katarina that it, it depends on which kind of study you're um, you're actually doing. So, if it's the cohort study, uh, the the controls are the one that you are not exposed to the, the subject you are um, learning about or studying about. Okay, so th that's an important point made here. The term case control is confusing in part because the term control is used in a court study and the term control is also used in a case control study. Now remember the difference between the two is in a cohort study, we are when we talk about control, we are talking about exposure. People who do not smoke, for example. Here we are talking about people who do not have cancer. So, Katrina, can you see the difference between the two? If your study is a case control design and you're talking about healthy volunteers, which someone suggested was, a, was an answer earlier. I'm just trying to figure out who was it who suggested that. Yeah, I'm uh, actually. Um, Jacka, you suggested I, that for volunteers actually, or healthy volunteers. So yeah, you I will need actually, to look for volunteers who you can be sure do not have cancer in this control study. Yes, that's the just, suggestion. Mm -hmm. but if you're doing a cohort study, you actually do not know whether somebody has cancer or does not have cancer at the beginning of the study. The starting point is simply to measure how much people are smoking. Some people may not smoke at all. They will end up becoming people who we might call our control group. But some of them on follow up will develop cancer. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. So it's important to, when we talk about control, to be very clear about whether we are talking about control in the sense of outcome or whether we are talking about control in the sense of exposure. And these are two completely different things. I'll be very happy for more questions or comments concerning what we are discussing now. And if I have missed anything that was said. And so, so Marisha, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. I apologize for that. Uh, you, you are asking the question, cohort study evaluates risk of developing disease. So look on your question. If you are assessing mortality in a particular disease by following people up, then in this type of a cohort study, 
your disease is a characteristic of the participants who enter the study, then you follow these people up with the disease. So this is your cohort that is up. And then you figure out after a number of months or years, depending on the disease, weeks or days, whether they are alive or dead. And in this case, you are evaluating the risk of death over a period of time in people with disease. So thank you for highlighting that point. Disease can be a feature of the participants in a particular cohort study. The disease can in another way where people, let's say, are at risk. For example, if you want to follow a cohort of university students to see if they develop coronavirus disease, then in this situation, the disease is an outcome measure. It's in the university are your participants and you follow them up to see how many hours they are spending in class to determine their exposure to a classroom for students. In this case, disease, the coronavirus disease is your outcome. And you evaluate by following students up over a period of time, risk of developing coronavirus disease. So I hope you can see that disease is not always, the risk of disease is not always evaluated in a cohort study, it depends on what your question is. Make sense, uh, Manisha? Okay, thank you for your, uh, for your answer. Any other question? So I, I think if there are no more questions and, or, or is somebody typing? I just heard some typing uh, in the background. Maybe a question will turn up. Uh, if, if, I I understand, if there is a question. If I understand correctly, when you are talking about experimental exposure in a cohort study, you are talking about not receiving uh, an experimental treatment or maybe not giving up uh, a vice that could lead to an undesired uh, outcome or something like that. Okay, so. Uh, thank you for bringing up that point. Uh, is that Jaka who was talking? Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. And I hope I pronounce your name reasonably correctly. And if I have, then I apologize. It's not uh, well, good. Well, look, I'll now give you something that maybe you haven't come across described the way I'm about to describe. A randomized control trial is a special type of a cohort study. So when you give a new treatment to patients and compare this to standard care or a placebo, which is a control exposure, you can be comparing experiment exposure, new treatment, to control exposure, standard treatment or placebo. Then if you use randomization to allocate subjects to one or the other, I'm now pointing with my, with my pointer to the box concerning allocation of subjects. And see that by introducing randomization at this stage, you convert what would otherwise have been a cohort study into a randomized trial. Make sense? Or have I confused you? Um, I think I, I can follow, but uh, please do go, do go on. Okay. Anybody else amongst colleagues who is listening Left confused with what I said.
Okay, Paulona, thank you. You said, you just said, no, you were not confused. So I appreciate your feedback. So I think I'd like from now on for us to begin to think about these two designs. Uh, in the cohort design, we may or may not use randomization. If we use randomization and follow people up, that becomes what we call um, randomized control trial. With this background, I just like to move on to the next stage, which is, I wonder why, so to get to the next stage, I think I can take the chat away and, okay. So here, we go back now to asking questions. Can coronavirus cause lymphoproliferative disorder? Participants could be people at risk. Exposure could be those with coronavirus confirmed by a test, those without. The absence of disease confirmed test. Outcome, the disorder, lymphoproliferative disorder confirmed by histology, for example or absence of outcome confirmed by histology. And then this could be a cohort or a case control study. If we have taken people at risk and followed them up in time to see if they develop the disorder, then that will be a cohort study. You can see that in this situation, randomization will not be feasible. You cannot randomize people to receive coronavirus or not ethically. On the other hand, if you took people with lymphoproliferative disorder and went back in their records to see if they were exposed earlier on on a virus or not, then this would be a case control study. I hope I hope that makes sense. I'd like you now to create an example of your own. Uh, I think I, uh, Mira, you just asked if I could give an example of cohort study that is not randomized. I hope I have given you that example uh, with respect to coronavirus and lymphoproliferative disorder. Uh, are you satisfied with my answer? Jenna, you just said it makes sense. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mirala, you are also, thank you. I'd like each one of you to make a question in this sense, uh, using your outcome and design. It could be based on the work that you are doing in your own cases, or if you have been encouraged to think about if you're just starting your thesis or it's a paper that you have just read and would like to use it as an example, or it's a patient you have just seen last week, you have a query. So I appreciate if anyone can volunteer either by either by unmuting your microphone or by writing in the chat, the various components, participants, exposure, outcome, and design. Okay, so at least uh, two three different questions are coming up one after the other. So let me just see if I can help, if I can, right, we can see more here. So, um, Gaber, let me just go through your question first, which is can radiotherapy act synergistically with immunotherapy cancer? So basically, 
radiotherapy is the standard treatment or comparison. Immunotherapy combined with radiotherapy is intervention. Participants are patients with cancer. And outcome is survival. Okay, you see, I have the, the small change that I made, Geber, in your description. Are you are you satisfied with that? With with what changes? Excuse me. Can you please repeat that? Geber, I said the participants are people with cancer. That are already receiving immunotherapy. So okay. The, Just the wait a moment. So immunotherapy will become the standard care or the control intervention. Combining radiotherapy with immunotherapy will become your intervention. Correct. And the outcome will be survival. So that's the small change I recommend to you. If you move immunotherapy as a comparison inside. Does that make sense? Or, or do I need to write this to explain this further? Gabe, will it help me to will it help to write, or have I explained it reasonably well? I, I think you, you have explained it. Uh, understand. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay, and uh, then we can move to Mirella. You are talking about infertile women as participants. Then you want to perform a radiological test called hysterosalpingogram, I presume. What is comparison for hysterosalpingogram in the infertile way for you? So, suggesting that for some women you will not use hysterosalpingogram and you will allocate them randomly. You, you want to use your microphone back to that? Hello, hearing? Yeah. Okay. I look for your question. I think participants are infertile women. That is clear. Okay. The uh, we is whether they become pregnant, that is also yeah. clear. Yeah, all women uh, that uh, go through uh, uh, therapy uh, that are infertile, uh, most of them, uh, if they are not overaged, uh, go through this diagnostic uh, ACCG. Uh, but uh, uh, and it, this uh, uh, makes them about uh, three four months waiting until uh, they go to treatment. So we can make maybe placebo to in comparison with the uh, ACCG. Okay. Um, How can you make the placebo? Can you tell me a little bit more? Just uh, nothing, doing nothing. Okay. So my uh, um, uh, so uh, because ACCG would be it is a diagnostic method, but it would be like a treatment. Okay. Um, uh, in this uh, 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 investigation. Okay, well, th that's perfectly fine. That's a good question, Mirella. Okay. It's a good okay, example of a question for a randomized trial. Thank you. Okay, Jaka, you have also formulated a question. Uh, uh, just a sec. <laughs> Um, now I was just thinking about the case control study, if I got the terminology right. Mm -hmm. um, that is the what, what I wrote in the chat. So you're going to find people with the outcome who have atypical Parkinson's disease? Yes. What, they, will they the, what will be the control group for these cases? Um, I mean, there, there were some cases of a typical Parkinson's disease in the tropics like Guadalupe Island. Um, and so you will go to the I, same island and find other people who have Parkinson's disease that is typical. Is that right? Um, I mean, uh, is the 
at the moment we need to talk about uh, our proposed uh, doctoral thesis, I mean PhD thesis, or uh, we can talk about uh, another case that is not related. Well, you talk about anything. I will give you my comments. But look, ultimately, it is your own supervisor with whom you will need to agree your specific hypothesis. Mm. No, I, it's just a, a proposal. I mean, uh, just how I imagined for the case uh, control study. I mean, for this case of uh, atypical Parkinson's disease. Okay. So, uh, look, it is very uh, important to figure out whether you will be following people up in time, forward, prospectively, or whether you will go back in their history after confirming the presence of disease and defining them as a case with the outcome. Yes, uh, they, already, they already got the disease. Uh, the question is how, how what is the causative agent? Uh, and in this case, the probable causative agent is consumption of fruits of Anona muricata that are like okay. uh, so, of so, so you will need to find a group of control outcomes. Yes. They will be, they will, you will need to find that, but for the purpose of discussion today, you could say that the control outcome group will be Parkinson's disease that is typical. You will okay. take, you will go back in time to check their history of consumption of this fruit. And you would yes. hope that in the control group, the history of consumption of this fruit is lower than in the atypical Parkinson's disease cases. Is that correct? Yes, that's exactly correct. So that's very good. So you, this is like a case control study where you will go back in time and discover in the past if there was greater exposure. Yes. Right, so that's a good question. Then Sarah, you also have a question. SARS-CoV-2 positive, otherwise healthy athletes. These are your participants, exposure is no, yes, I was just giving an example of a cohort study. We could take a group of otherwise healthy people who contracted uh, this disease and follow up for 10 years to see how many of them would develop the myocarditis and see if there is any um, bigger chance for them to develop it as uh, in the general population. So it would be a cohort study. Okay, Sarah, think about yes. this. Yes. Can you not also take a group of athletes who you know SARS-CoV-2 yes. negative? Yes. And follow them up for 10 years? Yes, yes, you are completely right. I made a mistake. The control group would be SARS-CoV negative athletes. Uh, yes, okay. of course. So, Sarah, I'm not saying you made a mistake. I'm saying there are two options. Yes, but it's more uh, comparable to take the same yes. groups. Yes. yes, if you follow people up and your starting point was similar for two groups, then I think they will be more comparable. That is correct. Yes. So, so thank you for bringing this, this point because it helps us to see that uh, the way you construct your question can create groups that are more or less comparable. Yes, so that's totally right. Very important to spend a lot of time thinking about your question. Because if you haven't thought hard enough about your question, you can easily end up doing the wrong study. All right, so we've discussed immunotherapy, we've discussed. Uh, uh, we've discussed uh, fertility, we've discussed athletes. Uh, there is also a question about malformations. Uh, that was your 
Text, can you comment on that, please? Yes, sorry, it came in, in too yeah, many please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes. So uh, my question is, uh, uh, what is the functional outcome uh, bowel function after long-term follow-up uh, after posterior sagittal anorectal uh, anorectoplasty after operation in patients with anorectal malformations? So the participants are patients with anorectal malformations uh, that were operated on, uh, and the outcome is bowel function uh, comparing to healthy non-operated or patients without anorectal malformations, and it is a case control. Okay, so let's now think about this a little bit more. Okay. Let's think about this a little bit more. Patients with anorectal malformations, that's perfectly good description. Okay. But once you make that description, I mean, how can you really have healthy controls? Patients without uh, malformations, so patients that were not operated on okay. for Look, any kind of Now, let me just ask you, did you want to compare people with and without surgery or with and without anorectal malformations? These are two different things. Yeah, but it's hard to have a patient with anorectal malformation that was not actually operated on, especially or if there are any kinds, any types of anorectal malformation that they didn't need an operation because it's quite a diverse so, group. Okay, now let's just go back a bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, bit by going, by saying go back a bit more. Let's describe the question in a simple single sentence. What is it that you would like to achieve? For example, mm -hmm. remember when I was talking about, when I see this picture, I become curious whether the driver is a man or woman. <laughs> okay, so what is the bowel and, function? Uh, and the yeah. same way Mirella, when she framed her question about hysterosalpine geography, basically she asked a simple question. Yeah. Can hysterosalpine geography increase the fertility? Okay. So what is your simple question? It, what is the functional outcome after the operation with pay? with these patients. Okay, so basically the healthy control is of no interest to you in this situation. No. <laughs> yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. So you want to know, so your participants are all with more malformations, exposure yes. operation. Yes. But are there different types of operations? Uh, basically they are possible, but basically I would want to know what is the, uh, functional outcome after this kind of operation. Yes. Well, the, then basically you do not have any control group. Yes. You so are simply describing the outcome in one group. Okay. And this type of a study is a prognostic study. Yes. And at the end of your study, you will be able to say out of 100 people, this or this go people, good. Whatever this the go, number was, yeah. this what go percentage well. had a particular outcome? Okay. So you don't need a case. You don't need a control. You don't need, or maybe if you're comparing two well, functioning. Yes. Well, so now, are mm -hmm. you talking about control exposure or a no. control? with respect to outcome? It is outcome, yes. When I, uh, if outcome is the, the, the operation, then yes. You look what, what's happening with the, with the patients, how, the, how is their bowel function. If you are the outcome the, is bowel function. The outcome is bowel function, so it yeah. is... It's, so based on what you've told me, yeah. To believe you simply want to calculate the bowel function success of the operation through the rate of the bowel function. Yeah, 
Yeah. But do you think it's possible that the anorectal malformation come in different levels of severity? Yes, they do. Well, in this case, now you are talking about something different. Your that patients you are, your participants are patients who all have operation. Mm -hmm. And you can see the exposure is that the severity of malformation is different. Mm -hmm. So they have a, they are exposed to more severe malformation or less yes. severe malformation. Okay. Now you can say you can the compare. operation gives a different outcome mm -hmm. according to the severity of malformation. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? More interesting, but it's been said. <laughs> say, say, say it one more time. No, so it's more interesting, but it's already been proven. Well, then you need to study a different question. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. This is okay, the this but, is the beginning. But I think this discussion was helpful because yes, colleagues can see me. that what you were imagining was participant, in fact, changed into exposure mm -hmm. in light of our discussion. Okay, thank you. So the, the 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 confusion between whether something is an exposure or an outcome or participant is common. So I'd like you to think that even experienced researchers can be confused about this. This is not an easy part of science. The difficult part of science is figuring out the right question. Okay, we now move to... Uh, so, Katrina has a question. Case can... You know, Katrina, give the answer first. So I can comment on your answer. Hello. Um, yes. Sorry, I didn't hear you in the in um, right now for a few uh, moments. What did you say? Can you repeat? You're in the past. So the answer yeah, to that okay, is you yes. Were missing the, answer. Yes. the answer yes. to this part of the question is yes. And the next question you say is, is this retrospective? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't hear you. Um, I don't hear your answer. <laughs> well, um, looking f through what um, you and our colleagues have uh, spoken about, I have a sense that the case control study is always retrospective. So you are looking first at the outcome of some disease or some something that you are of your question, and then uh, you look back through um, through the symptoms or through the uh, information of your patients, and you research what they did have or didn't have. For example, exposure to cigarettes. Um, in patients with um, lung cancer, let's say. So I, I have a feeling that it is always retrospective. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Excuse me? Call it retrospective. Whether you call this traveling back in time retrospective. Uh -huh. Okay, maybe I don't understand really well what that means. Yeah, maybe. You know what, Katrina, even I don't understand whether that is what retrospective means. Uh-huh, okay. And I'm doing research. You know that I published my first paper 30 years ago. Yes. If you're confused, please don't consider yourself the only person who's confused about it. Okay, this. okay. Thank you. Let's um, go so, and describe so this clearly. Mm -hmm. I can give you my definition. This may not be the same as that in the textbook. Mm -hmm. I can okay, also yes, give you my definition, mm -hmm. but it may not be that of your supervisor. 
Okay. But yes, I please. <laughs> would like to make clear that case control study is what you describe, which is it is always looking for symptom or exposure in the. Mm -hmm. Side question of what does retrospective mean? I give you my definition of retrospective. Well, I give you my definition of prospective. I actually okay. don't know what retrospective means. Prospective is you have. your protocol before identifying cases and controls and before asking them mm -hmm. their exposure in the is possible to do that katrina well unfortunately i haven't heard the whole of your answer so um uh it seems like we have some problems with the sound i'm not sure Maybe yeah, maybe we should all mute while you are talking or while one is talking. So maybe um, if you can just quickly repeat if it's not a problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's absolutely not a problem for me to repeat. I say. Identify all the cases. Also, tomorrow, the day after, you identify all the controls. And you ask the people what were their exposures in the past. This will be a prospective study. Put your protocol before you collected the data. Do you follow what I said? Um, partially, yes. Okay, so you you write protocol beforehand in prospective, and in retrospective, you just look back to all the documentation that you already gathered, like you um, in your group. Well, look, uh, please don't become too worried about what is the exact definition. Because I think if you ask 10 different people, you will get 10 different definitions. Uh -huh. Okay. The important thing is you understand fully what is a case control design. And based on what you wrote in your message, I am confident that you understand fully what is a case control design. Okay. Thank you very much for your answer. And now there is a uh, judge. You have uh, more clear explanation about your question so that's good yours is a case control design um trina you have you're trying to help us to figure out how we can all hear better thank you for that uh, right i think everybody agrees i'd like to move on to to the next stage